Hello, this is Kizma, and welcome to Kizma and the Dark Yogi, brought to you by SourceMovement.com. We're here for people who want to be radically authentic and courageously vulnerable. So whether you're a yoga teacher, entrepreneur, or leader building a tribe, we're here to get your energy and mindset positioned for success. No more stress, no more lack of energy. It's time to lead with your full potential. Our intention is to leave the world a better place than we found it and inspire you to do the same. So hey, if this message in our podcast resonates with you and you've not already subscribed, go ahead and subscribe to Kizma and the Dark Yogi on iTunes. And while you're at it, give us a rating and let us know what you think. If you have someone in your life that would enjoy this conversation, share it with them. Want more information about the movement? Just go to sourcemovement.com. So let's get started, and I hope you enjoy this episode of Kizma and the Dark Yogi. Hey, everybody. Welcome to this episode of Kizma and the Dark Yogi. And today we're going to dive into a really interesting topic called Eka Grata. And what that means basically is a single-pointed focus. And I don't know about you, but I noticed like just a massive amount of distraction in the world today. And I think it's more important than ever if you want to accomplish something in the world, if you want to accomplish something in your life, to have a single-pointed focus to go about it and to get it done. So we're really excited to dive into this topic. In the meantime, if you are not already a subscriber, definitely uh, go ahead and find us in iTunes and subscribe. You can find us on SoundCloud and Stitcher. Give us a rating and a review while, while you're at it. Let us know what you think. And without further ado, we're going to dive into this topic of Echograta or single point of focus. Welcome, everyone. I'm so glad you're here. Uh, yeah, this interesting word, Ekagrata, you know, if you're a, a yogi on the line, you've used the word Eka in your practice, right? Like Ekapada, Chaturanga, Ekapada, Kundinyasa, all these fancy poses that we do. Um, Eka is one, Pada would be foot, leg, whatever. Um, but when we look at Ekagrata, this word, it's about one pointedness would be one of the translations I got from the, the Sanskrit meaning. And, but we want to take that to a further place, obvious in our lives. When we look at one pointedness, I, I tend to think that single pointed focus on whatever it is we're working on, whatever it is we're doing. The translation here is more about how do we keep the one pointedness, the single pointedness on our higher our higher self, our higher work, um, that which we aspire to be, the person that we desire to to be, the energy that we want to have. And this is really important because if you just look around in our world and notice our own feelings, we are constantly being so like teased by our mind, so to speak. We were just having this conversation before the call, and it's like the mind is this little trickster. We'll get so far ahead in our personal work, our business, our relationships. And then the mind has this way of like, come on back, you know, come on back to what you know and what you're comfortable. You really don't have to level up because it's, it's playing this trick on us. There's a, a place that we know in our lives. There's a place, a way of being that we always are. And that's a comfortability factor. But we truly do, as humans, the reason we're on this planet is to constantly accrete more light, to raise our frequency, and to ascend. Uh, If we looked at the absolute teaching, it's like the highest form of service is to seek self-realization. Well, that is going to happen to maybe one in I don't know how many millions of people to have that absolute objectivity and self-realization. But what we can do in our reality is decide, where do I want to direct my thoughts? And what happens with Eka Grata is it becomes this practice where we then begin to really notice every thought we have, every thought flow. Is it an upward draft or is it a downward draft? Is the thought flow that we're having at this moment taking us away from our breakthrough that we desire or is it helping us to take that next step forward, that next breath forward? Is our thought flow made up of judgment of other people or judgment of ourselves? Because that in itself will, in fact, fracture our soul energy. So whenever our soul energy is fractured, then it becomes even more difficult to hold that echograda position of higher. 
And this is something, our thought flow can be controlled, absolutely 100%, but it takes a practice. It really takes a discipline to be able to control the thoughts. And the teachings of Vedanta, they call it the intellect. This is like the master guide of our own being that is able to direct our thoughts to govern our emotions. Because I'm sure all of us can see that in order to know why we're feeling a certain way, we just look at our thought flow, right? If we're having kind of a day of down and out, not feeling right, look at what you're thinking. It's correlated. It, it's integrated. It's it's definitely creating your emotional position. And when we can create, whether it's a pattern interrupt, whether it's a spiritual teaching, whether it's just that immense discipline of noticing the thoughts and changing them, So they're always pointed to the higher. This is probably the most important and most profound practice that we as human beings can have because as we've always heard, as we think, so we become. It sounds cliche. This phrase has been used so much. But as we think, so we become. And so being able to have that echo grata, that one pointedness, that single pointed focus on our thoughts, on our actions, on our lives will then allow us to not just control our life, but to really command our reality. You know that Nick and I are like really passionate about manifesting. We're pretty much ninja manifestors. That comes from controlling our thoughts. We can't manifest, you know, a beautiful life if our thought flow is always going downward. We can manifest what we desire by having that single pointed focus. And I use this a lot, you know, if you just, if you, like the yogis on the line, if you equate this with your physical practice. I've shared this story before. I wanted to work on my handstand. Handstand has always been tricky for me because I played the flute for years and had a little funky shoulder thing, but really I had a fear. I love being upside down, but I don't like getting there. I like getting there in a headstand. I like getting there in a forearm balance. I had to work on that. I didn't like getting upside down, but I loved being upside down. That's kind of funny, right? So I created a system, a single pointed focus. Every day I did a specific flow, the same flow over and over and over for about three months. And then one day, handstand just came because I worked on the muscles that I needed. I worked on the shoulders, all those things. It was single pointed focus. So we can look at different areas in our life and be like, well, what do we need single-pointed focus on? If we're a parent, how do we create a single-pointed focus on not having codependency with our children to allow them to be who they are and to be a parent that is evolved, loving, compassionate, not judging? If we're looking at building a business, What is the next thing that needs to happen? How do we sustain single-pointed focus on that one thing that if we do in a way of excellence will then help everything else evolve? For most of us, that one thing is actually holding the single-pointed focus. That's a bit of the irony of it to me. So I don't know, Nick, do you have any ideas you want to pop in or share with that? Well, I guess what I'd want to ask you is it sounds like it's having one foot in both worlds. So there's the foot that's always in connected to the higher and the single pointed focus there, but it's then always drawing from that and coming from that space to apply it in the world and be Mm -hmm. and act in, in, in this world, which is another thing that we're really passionate about because all of this spiritual knowledge in the world isn't necessarily going to help you live a better life. It isn't. Right? Or create something in this world that's really meaningful to Mm -hmm. you or help you feel accomplished or help you feel like Contribute like you contributed, you know, um, or to just raise the vibration of the world. So, how you know, like how do you keep one mm-hmm. foot in both worlds like that? That's great, and I should you know I should clarify like obviously a spiritual practice will help, but if it's just a ton of information that is not implemented, not integrated, it's just a ton of information. Um, it's that that very great teaching of we want to take information and allow it to become wisdom by really embodying the information. And yes, you know, to have one foot in the most divine world that we can contemplate and one foot in our world is a balance in itself. It's a little bit tricky, but it's absolutely what will 
raise our frequency, protect us actually from a negative energy or negative energy that is out there. And it then becomes this system, if you will, of every single moment being the most luxurious opportunity to elevate ourselves. Really, like every moment, every thought, every action is ability to look at what am I doing? Am I elevating? Am I raising my frequency? Am I creating more light? Am I dropping the lower desire to reach for the higher? Am I able to resolve conflicts and stand in my truth? Because as I always say, the world is, it's not about the world's going to change people. The world's not changing. It's our perception, our relationship, our navigation of the world that allows us to elevate constantly and consistently. That's great. Um, I think my question around it is uh, how, maybe why do, why do you think that people, there seems to be a tendency for people to think that they don't have control over their thoughts. I just am the way I am and I just think the way that I think and the thoughts just pop up and I can't really control Mm -hmm. that. Um, that's the tendency that I've seen for people by and large. Mm -hmm. So why do you think that people have, why do you think that people think that? Well, Well, I think it's just bullshit. I think it's a cop out. I think that it, for one, they've probably been told that too. someone or many people in their life demonstrate that very belief by not changing their own thoughts. And it's a lot easier to be like, I can't control my thoughts. This is just who I am. That's just wrong. That's just crazy. That means that's basically negating any inkling of evolution. And we are here to evolve. That's why we're here to evolve. So that just is actually quite hilarious to me. Yeah, I mean, it's hilarious. It is. It is. But it's something that's really real for people. Mm -hmm. You know, they're walking through the world. And I think a lot of people just feel like I can't help feeling that way. Mm-hmm. Somebody hurt me, you know, mm-hmm. and, and and if you put it into more extreme circumstances, you can see why that happens. Like, man, like somebody just cheated on somebody else. This mm-hmm. person is really angry and really hurt mm-hmm. by that. And they're like, I can't control my anger or my hurt. Mm-hmm. Now, it's like a double edged sword of like, well, you can beat the crap out of yourself for feeling the way that you're feeling, right? Mm-hmm. Which kind of perpetuates the downward spiral of being in that frequency and then obviously manifesting and creating from that frequency, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, or it's the choice to step out of that and to draw into a higher frequency and to start the healing process. Right. But so many people get caught into that and they keep justifying themselves. Like, mm-hmm. what do you do with that? Yeah, that is that is a good question. Well, number one, we can't stuff those emotions down. Like, those emotions are real and and we experience them. So that's why we work so much on clearing um, and looking at things that become triggered or activated from our past. So when something happens in the present, we're like, wow, that's really interesting. Why is that happening to me? And it really is like it takes an immense amount of discipline to pause to really pause and go, all right, you know, right now this situation does not feel good. I'm Maybe I'm heartbroken. Maybe I feel like all these people did things to me. But it is that ability to look at it in free will choice to say, I am stepping out of this. Uh, you know, the person that receives or takes the triggers or, or, you know, the hurt language, we have a choice where we can not receive that pain. It's not easy. I'm not saying this is going to be possible all the time. For some of you, it will be. But to work on that ability to notice that when someone does something to us or says something hurtful to us, that is really their energy component. And we can choose to not take it personally. We may still have to meet the energy. I'm not saying like cower down if someone says something that's not right. Like Meet the energy, but that's coming from your full potential self. And then have that choice. It's all choice to step out of the victim energy or look what's happening to me in, and to step into I am the architect of my life. So what am I going to do now? What's the next step? Yeah, and it seems like that this, it's really easy to take a conversation that's about single-pointed focus and then to go off on some of these tangents, Mm -hmm. right, which is kind of, away from the single point of focus. But the reason I think it's important is because this is exactly what happens in everyday world and these are the obstructions to single pointed focus. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's not like like some people can do it through sheer will, I think. 
where they're just like, I'm going to will myself, I'm going to be so freaking focused, and I'm just going to do this, mm-hmm. right? And they just go. Um, but along the way, most people get distracted with some sort of drama or right. trauma or whatever it is that they start to get sucked back into the world mm-hmm. and away from. So I think it's important to look at the obstructions to that. Mm-hmm. Um, drama and trauma, those yeah. are two of the biggest ones that I can think of. Can you think of any others that are really big? Well, drama and trauma, you know, they encompass so much. That that drama is like probably the number one addiction in our society. And drama comes in many different levels from, wow, I'm at the supermarket and I'm just going to stare at that image of Bruce Jenner. Jenner. Uh, or it can be also, you know, I just had the experience myself. I went out to this morning. I was on my computer starting new slides for a training this afternoon and I went to get a something and I ended up seeing something on Facebook and it grabbed me and I was off course for five minutes and I was like oh my god that was so fast and it wasn't necessarily drama but it was something that caught my eye so it's always this engagement of our senses you know what do they say like the senses of the world will pull your senses in so it's like the moth that flies right into the light and burns you know, it, it, it's just, it's incredible how we're just so drawn to things. And if we don't have that control over our senses, we do very quickly become distracted. Right. Yeah, so much. And and I don't want to go off on another tangent here, but I just want to, I just want to throw this out as a, you know, as a, as a thought, uh, a point for consideration is I would say, this is just my opinion, Mm -hmm. that time is probably our most valuable commodity ever. Like Mm -hmm. it's the one thing that you spend and and you you never get back, you Mm -hmm. know, really. And how prone the average human being is to absolutely abuse time. Yes. Like endlessly Mm -hmm. with distractions Mm -hmm. and with all these things that we're talking about, you know, that get us caught up either in internal drama or external drama. That takes us away from mm-hmm. what we're here to mm-hmm. do. Yeah, I think it's too. It's it's ironic because this happens because of all the amazing technology we have, right? If you look back in the day of where most people in this country, anyways, farmed, they didn't abuse time because they had to start work at a certain hour and get done. They had to do exactly according to the clock of nature. There was no abuse of time ever. Now we can, we don't even have to look in an encyclopedia, right? We just have everything that we need, but our mind can take us so off course. And that is really fascinating to me, you know, and I would say to just basically to sum it up in a way to bring all of it back to that echo grata, that one pointedness, that single pointed focus is to decide within each and every one of you what truly is most important in your life. Is it your spiritual practice? Is it your family? Is it your business? You know, I would hope that everyone has a sparkle of spirituality because that will actually serve your family so well. It will serve your business. You have no idea. And to have the intention to hold Eka Grata in that way so that every thought, every action is constantly being lifted up. It's like, you know, from above, one of your beautiful guides or angels or ascended masters or a God has this string into your thoughts and just gently like, come on, you know, just lift him a little bit higher, just a little bit more. And when you can see it that way, you will begin to fall into a rhythm where it's very natural for you to start your day with contemplation on the higher. It will be very natural for you to take a moment when you're tired to pause and reflect on the higher It'll be very natural for you to serve yourself, to take care of yourself so that you can, in fact, focus on the higher. I think it's more important now than ever Mm. that this skill be developed, right? Because um, just for the exact reason that you said, it's like now it's not so much a matter of just stepping into a life that's pretty much carved out for you. If you're going to farm, you pretty much know what that's going to look like, you know, Um, but not anymore. Yeah, not right. in our day and age, not right? Not in our day and age, yeah, and exactly. and how people um, so much, you know, like we want to we want to do something that lights us up, you know, like you want right. to do something, you want to follow your passion, and what we're finding, I think, more and more is that there's no certain way to do that. It's like you you just you go out into the world and you create a way, and, and mm-hmm. all of the information is there, and there's more opportunities than ever, right? Right. So it becomes so much more important to have that single pointed focus on your 
uh, goal, your mission, your ideal, whatever it is that you're really going after in life and whatever is most important to you so that you can stay out of all of the distractions. Mm -hmm. That single pointed focus and the ability to guide ourselves in that direction, um, you need that much stronger of an intellect because the, um, the, stimuli, mm-hmm. right? The right. Uh, everything from the world that's drawing you away from that is so much more powerful. Completely. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well said. I agree. So tips. Tips. Make a choice. Make a choice. What is something or just make the choice that, gosh darn it, I'm going to have Eka Grata every single day. I'm going to at least start with single pointed focus on the higher and carry that through. You know, maybe it's like a little I don't know, a timer, a something in the middle of the day, you stop and you just reflect. But to really make the conscious choice that no matter how your mind will want to trick you back in to the drama and the trauma and what you know, that you absolutely 100% have the ability to level up, to move forward. And the more you do so, it actually becomes easier. It really does become a way of living and flow and life. Oh, that's awesome. One that's worked for me is um, kind of a similar variation of that where um, between tasks, mm-hmm. like I know like I'm going to do this from this time to this time. Uh, between tasks is one, take a break, yeah. right? Just to kind of reset, you know, get away from the one thing so that you can just really smoothly switch gears into the other, eat something. I don't know. I'm one of those people that forgets to eat. Um, and then to recalibrate, right? Right. So it's like, and that for me is really connecting with, well, you know, I'm going to spend an hour doing this thing. Why is this important for one, like connecting it to the higher mission so that I can always stay connected to that? Like, right. why am I here? Right. Um, cause I think when we lose connection with that, like energy starts to drain really fast. Mm-hmm. And then secondly is just making making sure that I'm always clear with my outcome. Like yes. for the next hour, where am I going? Exactly. You know? Exactly. And it's yeah. just like those little things and it's not to micromanage myself, you know, the idea for me anyway is to do this uh as I become unconsciously competent and I find that I need it less and less yeah. over time. Mm-hmm. Um but I, there is a practice to be and a system to be mastered there right? so that you can come be- become unconsciously competent at it. Right. So Awesome. Yeah. Great. So go Eka Grata, everyone. Eka Grata, everybody. Single pointed focus. Ask yourself, what is most important to you in your life? What is your life all yeah. about? Mm-hmm. You know, what is the highest thing that you can go after? Right. And then you can just dial that down into your different areas as well. If you've never read the book, The One Thing. Great book. You should totally read that book. It's brilliant. And uh, and he definitely breaks this down in a in a really interesting way. Right. Um, but as we know in the spiritual realm, ultimately the the single pointed focus is on your full potential. That steady, steadfast gaze on your highest, so that you can constantly stay connected to that and continually surrender your lower will to the will of your full potential. Mm. And that's really where the power and the grace of living comes from. So thanks for, uh, thanks for joining us today. Yeah. Yeah. What a, what a great topic. Thank you for bringing that one up. For sure. Yeah. And, uh, have a great day, everybody. Namaste. Mm -hmm. Well, that wraps up our episode for today. We want to thank you all for joining us on this podcast. I hope you really enjoyed it. Please feel free to send any questions or insights to info at sourcemovement.com. If you haven't already, go ahead and subscribe in iTunes. You can look for Kizma and the Dark Yogi. Uh, and we're also on SoundCloud and Stitcher. We'd love it if you could give us a rating and a review. Let us know if you liked it. Uh, and certainly send any questions along. Hope you have an awesome day. Thanks for joining us. Namaste. Thank you so much for checking out this episode of Kizma and the Dark Yogi. We hope that you enjoyed it. If you've got somebody in your life that you think would really like this show, go ahead and share it with them. You can find us on iTunes. You can find us on Stitcher and SoundCloud as well. Look for Kizma and the Dark Yogi. We'd love to hear from you, so please give us a rating and a review. That would really help us in getting the message out there, and we'd greatly appreciate it. If you have questions or would like to hear us talk about something on the show, please drop us a line at podcast at sourcemovement.com. That's podcast at sourcemovement.com. Until the next time, namaste. Namaste.